Now, what neuroscience is increasingly telling us is that for people who live in fight or flight, one key way to get out of fight or flight is to actually complete the actions of the body that were a defensive orientation, a defensive action, and take it through to its logical completion. This is actually the whole premise of trauma work, that people who are traumatized started a defensive posture, started an orientation towards the threat, and got overwhelmed and frozen. And now, after the event, we keep restarting that sequence and keep getting to the place of being frozen and we are always attempting to complete that orienting defense, like turning the head for instance, or the defensive action of fight, flight by running, or freeze. So in our work, we like to empower our clients. So in IBMP, we're not trying to create victims because most people have been victimized already coming into therapy from their life. So the fight response is very empowering. And the fight response to the brain will help the amygdala, which is the part of the brain that mediates and looks at what's going on in the body and therefore what is your reality. If we do a fight response, the brain, after getting all this new information, will make the decision that you are no longer needing to be in fight or flight and can now enjoy the reward of being in the parasympathetic parasympathetic relaxed state. So what does this exercise look like? Well, <clears throat> the brain knows your movements in time and space. That's part of the brain's job, is to track your movements of the body. And that has meaning for the, for the brain. So if I was to use my upper body, you've got to remember that in fight or flight terms, that the, the point from the heart to the top of the head is highly charged. So people who live in their heads this is just a symptom of the fact that the energy and arousal of our body-mind network is pretty much dominated between the line of the heart and the top of the head. So that means the upper body and the arms are charged, meaning they're, they're tense and holding and ready for fight or to flight, or the arms come up and lock us into freeze. So what we want to do is complete one of those actions. So we're going to complete with a fighting response because that empowers the person and gives them what we call in trauma work and neuroscience, acts of triumph. So we're gonna give you an act of triumph which will create a beautiful wellness response in the body. So this is how it looks. We could punch and use the martial arts, ha, ha. But what we haven't dealt with in terms of body-mind tension is the fact that many people have chronic tensions in their trapezius muscles, which come from the occipital area of the back of the neck and flare down into the shoulders, the rhomboid muscles that attach on the back, the teres muscles, and the sternocleidomastoid muscles in the neck. So what we want to do is not so much punch forward as to come back. So this is how the exercise looks. You are soft in the legs, as we've always done. You are going to use the ha, 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 like we've been using and you synchronize to bringing your arm backward in each side. So just watch me how I do it. Ha, 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 In some traditions, some people from this place use the word off instead of ha, meaning they feel like someone's on their back, so they go off, 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 off. It's totally up to you. The brain has, as part of the somatosensory cortex and the dorsal vagal system, a whole network of biofeedback indicators that come back and tell the brain what state you're in. From doing all these exercises, and that was the last one, what will happen is that the brain believes you had a fight. So it then says to the, to the body, okay, well I expect if you've had a fight that the predator we've been fearful of has now resulted from fighting that you might have torn limbs, bleeding, cuts, bruises, loss of limbs, trauma. So I'm gonna check out your body and report back to the brain. 
Now, because this is a therapeutic set of exercises, none of that is true. What will come back to the brain is the body is in a good shape, it's not damaged, it's not traumatized. So the brain then says, well, that tells me that you must have won the fight. So what happens then, the brain says, we've resolved the threat, the predator's gone, you've won the fight. Now to help you, because you've been fighting, I do need to tip you into this parasympathetic state anyway. The psychology said we had an act of triumph, we are now empowered, we are feeling good. What will happen is that in the next up to five minutes, you'll get an indicator. Typically, you'll get a deep organic breath, or you may yawn. Now, both of those are part of the brain mechanism of coming out of fight or flight and tipping into parasympathetic state of wellness. Now, when you go into the parasympathetic state, which these exercises will take you into, your hypothalamus and other glands of the brain and body will start to produce beautiful things like endorphins, which are natural opiates that make you feel good in the body. It also boosts the immune system. So if you're having any minor ailments, any minor infections, any minor funguses, bacteria, viruses, your immune system boost will then activate the immune system in your body to deal with these things, to help you get over any minor illnesses you may have, but also to build resiliency against getting any of these chronic minor reinfections that go around offices and in the community, especially in winter. So there's a great boost to the immune system. You get the feel good chemicals, you get the serotonin and dopamine amongst other things. So if you're a depression sufferer, you'll get these beautiful feel good chemicals, which is exactly what the drug companies try and help you with, with their SSRI brand of antidepressants. SSRI stands for Selective Serotonin Reuptake Inhibitor. That class of drugs works on the premise that by taking that drug, whatever serotonin you've got in your body, because you're lacking in it, you're deficient in it, if you live in fight or flight, this stops you reuptaking it or reabsorbing it into the bloodstream and into the body, so it's not available. So it comes from a premise of, you haven't got much of it, let's keep as much of it in the system for as long as we can. This is a far better approach, I believe, because what this says is, use the natural mechanisms of the body to produce more serotonin, to produce more dopamine, and because it's produced by the body, for the body, there's no side effects that you'll get, that you get from taking synthetic chemicals in the body. And as you know, if you look at antidepressant medication, there's a little pamphlet full of all potential side effects of taking those form of medication. Certainly if you're on antidepressants, stay on them and work with your GP over time to look at how you may, over time, get off antidepressants. All I'm saying is that these exercises give your natural body a natural boost and take you into the place where we're designed to live. Because the good news is our evolutionary biology designed us that we were supposed to spend 90% of our time into the parasympathetic wellness state of being. We're only actually chemically and biologically designed to live in the fight or flight state 10% of our average day. Guess what? The stats from the World Health Organization show that for many people, we're living the opposite, that we're spending up to 90% of our time in fight or flight, which is stress, living, and only getting 10% of our time in the parasympathetic state. So by doing these exercises, you can turn that around. If you want to be a victim and live a fate, you'll just keep waking up in the morning and going about your day and hoping for the best. But if you want to go from being a victim to being a master of your destiny and having a destiny, one of the best things you can do is to take ownership for the state of your body, the state of your mind, and the state of your wellness. And to start to do these exercises in the order I just did for two to three minutes each. And from that place, if you do them in the morning, which is the best time when you first get up, it sets your day up in an embodied way that you can have the best possible outcome and that you can have great resiliency against the stresses that come to all of us from living in our technological society and working day to day with the pressures that we all face in whatever style of lifestyle you have.